In this video, we're going to go ahead and continue with our solving for x in logarithmic equations. Always identify where the variable is. It's locked up in the log, so we're going to go ahead and convert to exponential form. We have 4 squared equals 5x plus 1. That's 16, and then we're going to, well, we'll just write it like this. 16 equals 5x plus 1. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get 15 equals 5x which means that 5 times 3, so x is equal to 3, is the solution to this equation. Let's just make sure it works. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. 4 squared is 16, so that does check out. So x is equal to 3. Again, variable is locked up in the log. We convert to exponential form. So that being able to convert to exponential form is a critical component to being successful in these kinds of problems. So number 17, again, our variable is locked up. We're going to go ahead and unlock it by taking the base, raising it to the power of 2 thirds, and setting that equal to x minus 5. So now we get some practice with what you guys learned last unit, and that is how to take a number and raise it to a, to a fractional exponent. And this says that we, we to simplify 8 to the 2 thirds, we're going to take the cube root of 8 and we're going to square that. Well, the cube root of 8, we know that's 2. And we know that 2 squared is 4, so we'll do that over here. 2 squared is 4, and that's equal to x minus 5. Well, when we add 5 to both sides, we see that x is equal to 9. And let's eyeball that. You can make sure when you, when you replace x with whatever you get, that you're always taking the log of a positive number. So we'll talk more about that when we talk about the graphs of the log functions. But a 9 works, so uh, log base 8 of 4. So we're just going to assume that 9 works because when you plug 9 in, you're going to get a positive number that you're taking the log of. And uh, again, when we get to graphing logs, we'll talk more about why that's true. So for number 18, we're, we find our variables both locked up in the log expressions, but we also remember the property that we learned earlier. That if we have the log base 4 on both sides, it's you can't divide by the log base 4, so don't do that. And don't think you just cross them off, but in reality what you're doing here is that if the, you're using the property that says that if the log on one side has the same base as the log on the other side, then the answers have to be the same. So what you're taking the log of has to be the same thing. So if the logs are equal, then the answers are equal. 3x minus 1 equals 2x plus 3. When we subtract 2x from both sides, as well as add 1 to both sides, we get x on the left, because the 1's cancel there. 2x is on the right cancel, we get 3 plus 1, 4. And when we check that, 3 times 4 minus 1, that's 12 minus 1 is 11, that's a positive number. And 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. So the log base 4 of 11 equals the log base 4 of 11. And likewise, here for number 19, we see that the logs are the same base. And so therefore, the arguments, or I should say the answers, have to be the same. I usually call it the arguments, but I'm calling it answers now. So we have x squared minus 6 has to equal 2x plus 2. Here we have a quadratic equation, so we're going to gather all the terms to one side, x squared minus 2x, we're going to also subtract 2 from both sides, so we have x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0, let's move that on up here. We have a quadratic equation, so we remember we factor both, or we factor the left side, and we get x minus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0, and when x minus 4 equals 0, it means that x equals 4. And then x plus 2 equals 0 means that x equals negative 2. Well, remember what I said. You always have to replace x with whatever you get here to see if we get an extraneous solution. Extraneous solutions usually occur when you get two of them like this, and you put one of them in, and it gives you a negative number that you're taking the log of. Like if I, if I replace x with 4, I get 4 squared is 16 minus 6. That's a positive 10. And then 2 times 4 is 8 plus 2 is 10. So log base 2 of 10 equals log base 2 of 10. So 4 works. However, 
I'm already looking at this negative 2, and I realize if I take negative 2 and square it, I'm only going to get 4. 4 minus 6 is going to give me a negative number, so I don't even have to replace x with negative 2 on this side because uh, I know that I can't take the log of a negative number. So therefore, that's extraneous. And x equals 4 is my only solution.